Well, we're going to stay with motoring now because if you want to invest in car dealerships, you've less choice than you used to. Marshall Motors was taken over last year. Lookers agreed to a takeover last month. And Pendragon looks like it's going to go the same way. Well, one of the remaining listed players in the sector, though, is Virtue Motors, owner of brands such as Bristol Street Motors and Macklin Motors. Today, the company reported an adjusted pre-tax profit of £31.5 million for the six months to the end of August. That was up 11.7% on the same period a year ago. Well, joining me now is the chief executive executive of Virtue, Robert Forrester. Robert, uh, good to see you again. Um, it looks as though some of the log jams of new car supplies that we've talked about in the past have, have started to lift. Yeah, Ian, that's certainly the case. We're getting more supply through. It's more consistent and all the issues post-COVID uh, seem to be going away. We're now obviously into a period uh, where there's increased electrification coming through. Uh, but overall, we're seeing a more normalised market. And what about the used market? What are you seeing there? Uh, our demand's uh, fairly stable. Uh, clearly, within a period of higher interest rates, the interest rates that customers are paying are higher. That is causing some issues, I suspect, around affordability. Uh, but uh, electric vehicle used car values have stabilised really quite nicely. We're buying electric vehicles for the used car market. If there's an issue, it's probably in the higher end premium where those interest rates on a high capital balance make so much of a difference. Now, you touched on electric vehicles just now. In the statement today, you note that demand for electric vehicles remains muted. Why do you think that is? Well, it's specifically retail demand. So that's private consumers coming in. Uh, I think there are very mixed messages coming from the government. The government actually said a couple of weeks ago it was going to move the ban from 2030 to 2035. I don't actually believe that's uh, really happened in, in reality. Uh, there's very robust demand from companies uh, for ESG reasons, but also to the tax breaks for electric vehicles for company car users. So I think the demand is split. Retail is, is fairly muted, but uh, corporate demand is very high. Other things being equal, what proportion of, of the sales mix would EVs account for these days? About 17% overall, but that's very skewed towards the fleet markets. Right. Now, you also note in the uh, statement that uh, from January, some battery electric vehicles are going to attract tariffs under the rules of origin provisions from following the UK's deal with uh, the EU post-Brexit. As things stand, a lot of governments are trying to push that back, including the German government and our own. Are you optimistic that they will succeed? Uh, to be honest, I've got absolutely no idea, but it makes absolutely zero economic sense. Uh, so you'd hope that some sense would prevail in the powers of uh, in the corridors of power to actually see this one off. This is, I think, broadly the last thing that the UK, UK or the European uh, manufacturers actually need. And there are enough uh, transitional uh, turbulence in getting electrification in without this additional problem. Presumably, though, Robert, this is an absolute nightmare for you. You're, you're, you're trying to set your budgets uh, for the next 12 months. You're trying to anticipate what demand is going to be. And you're having to factor in potential tariffs that push up prices for consumers. Well, I think we'll know by the time we get to our business planning, to be honest. Uh, and let's be fair, British business is well used to change and unexpected events. I just think it's just part of being in business at the moment and just have to handle it as best you can. Now, when we last spoke, you just completed the acquisition of, of Helston. Is, is that uh, properly bedded in now? Yeah, we're really pleased, actually. It was 28 dealerships down in the southwest of England. Uh, we've grown the Virtue brand down there, with lots of sponsorships, Plymouth Argyle, Exeter Chiefs, Somerset County Cricket. All our systems are in place. Still lots of work to do, as ever, uh, but integration's gone very well. And are you, what are you seeing in more broadly in terms of consumer confidence, Jess? Now, I mean, you touched on EVs just a moment ago. What, what about the wider market? Uh, to be honest, uh, demand is holding up pretty well, I think, actually. It's pretty resilient. Uh, I think that consumers, you've seen consumer confidence rise. A lot of car purchases are necessities, particularly in the used car market. The car breaks down, they need a new car, they have another baby, they need a bigger car, move house, have a new car. Uh, it's really in the discretionary top end where I think we're probably seeing a little bit more turbulence. But it's fairly steady as she goes, to be honest. Rob, it's always a busy day for your results day. It's great that you could spare the time to chat today. Thank you. Thank you very much.